Good day. Our topic today is about computer network models and security. Network engineering is a complicated task which involves software, firmware chips, level engineering, hardware, and electric pulses. The main objectives of the topic number one is you are to be expected to be familiarized to the different computer network models. It's a layered task, architecture of the network model. We have layer three per layers, layer two, and layer one. Okay. Each layer clubs all together, procedures, protocols, and methods, which requires to execute at a piece of task or layers. So let's start with an understanding of the OSI model. OSI is an open system interconnect. It's an open standard for all communication system. <coughs> it's a model established by ISO or the International Standard Organization. This model has seven layers. The application, the presentation, the session, the transport, the network, the data link, and the physical layers. It has five different types of data data segments packets frames and widths which we're going to try to see a little bit later as for the application layer it's responsible for providing interface to the application user this layer encompasses protocols which directly interact with the user uh, let's say browser that is an application layer. Using a Facebook, that is an application layer. <coughs> the next layer is called the presentation layer. This layer defines on how the data in the native format to the remote host should be presented in the native format of host. <coughs> if it is a video, the sender should be able to send a video to the receiver. So that's how we're going to present. If it is just simply a letter, it should be later received by the receiver. <coughs> a session layer maintains session between the remote host. For example, once the user password authentication is done, maintains the session for a while and does not ask the authentication again in the span of time. When you log in for the session layer, you will be allowed to utilize or use them. Okay? So already using it <coughs> that's for the session for the transport this layer transport to the end-to-end -end delivery between hosts from the user to the receiver to the receiver to the user for the network layers responsible for the address of assignment uniquely addressing hosts in the network uh, it involves IP addressing of different uh, computers in the network for the data link, responsible for reading and writing data from on to the line. Link errors are detected at these layers. So those bits, frames, packets, which most likely happens in this particular layer. Layer defines the hardware, cabling, wiring, power output, pulse rate, etc. And that is for the physical layer, which is the last one. All of our network devices is actually in the part of the physical layer. For the internet model, we have five layers, application, transport, network, data link, and physical layers. <coughs> so in OSI, we have seven, while in the internet, we only have five. So as per comparison, these two work together. The application layer defines the protocol which interacts like the FTP, HTTP, etc. For the transport, it is the TCP, uh, TCP IP, as, uh, that's what we call. And the IP is the internet protocol. The link layer provides the mechanism of sending and receiving and the actual data. Uh, unlike the counterpart model, <coughs> under the OSI, 
these layers independent and underlying network architecture and hardware so this will be the end of the topic one let's go to the security network <coughs> network security is an overarching terms that describes the policies procedures implemented by the network administrator to avoid and keep track on authorized access exploitation modification or denial of the networks and the network resources so it's simplifying like uh, administration of the design of your uh, network architecture as for the objectives respected to be familiarized with the network security issues and concern <coughs> uh, during initial days of the internet it was limited to military or universities for research and development purposes but now Common people may send data with a high sensitivity such as their bank credential, username, etc. etc. All security threats are intentional, but are only if internationally triggered. Security threats can be divided into the following categories. Number one, interruption. <coughs> a security threat with the availability of resources is to be attacked. Next is a privacy breach, which a user is compromised. Someone who is not authorized accessing the intercepting data the receiver. For example, uh, in your Facebook account, you can no longer use it. Then somebody use or breach your privacy. Integrity. As for the issue, includes any alteration or modification of the original context of communication. The attacker intercepts, receives data and sends to the sender. And then something like uh, they give you an email but that email contains a virus or something which uh, the integrity of your network or your data will be compromised. For authenticity, Who is the user? Who is the owner? Attack security violators possess a genuine person and then compromise the resources or communicate with the other genuine users. So there are a lot of issues, something like, oh, I forgot my password. <coughs> How can you log in? How can you be authenticated? That's a common term of problems. So this happens. Um, under it, the last one for that would be cryptography, which is a technique to encrypt the plain text data. It makes it difficult to understand and interpret. There are several cryptonic algorithms available present as described below. Secret key, public key, and messages. Let's turn on to the secret key. Both sender and the receiver have one secret key. This secret key is used to encrypt the data at the sender's end. After the data is encrypted, it is sent to the public domain to the receiver. Because the receiver knows and has a secret key, the encrypted data package can easily be decrypted. So it's between the two, the receiver and the sender. <coughs> so data is encrypted, to the secret key and then the data should okay the next one is a public key encryption every user has its own secret key and it's not shared domain it's never repealed into a public domain along it with secret key every user has its own public key so we'll have our own public key that we're able to decrypt those data by using our own uh, secret key. The last one is what we call the message digest. Uh, a common now is called an MD5 hashing. The actual data is not sent. Instead, a hash value is calculated and sent. The other end usage computes its own hash value and compare it with the just one received. If both value has match, it's, it's then accepted, otherwise rejected. Example of the message digest in MD5 hashing. 
For example, the input is m. It has an MD5 hash functions, which is equivalent to MD5 hash. So, same thing goes. Actually, this is one of the best way to integrate the authentication where the user password is cross-checked and once it is saved in the server. Okay, so I hope you learned something for today's topics, which is the computer network models, and simply by security. If you have any comment and suggestion regarding our topic, please don't hesitate to message me or send a comment at this video. Thank you very much and goodbye.